With Tesla stock getting absolutely hammered over the past few weeks, investors are beginning to look at Tesla's $18 billion cash hoard and trying to figure out how to best deploy it. In less than a month, Tesla stock has fallen about 33% from over $300 per share to sitting just above $200 per share. This seems like a great opportunity for investors to jump in and tell Tesla how to spend that cash, specifically using the money to buy back shares at these depressed prices. But is that the best use of Tesla's hard-earned capital? Before I continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. One of Tesla's major shareholders put out a tweet earlier this month for which Elon Musk replied to about 10 days later. The tweet was from Leo Koguan, who is Tesla's third largest individual shareholder behind Elon Musk and Larry Ellison. He's the founder and chairman of Xi International, which is a provider of information technology services. On October 3rd, when Tesla was at $248 per share, he wrote, I deployed my umbrella to catch 40,000 sharp knives at $248.88 per knife, hence 40,000 less knives hitting our courageous and wise Tesla bulls. We are not scared for we are the bulls. Now I have 22.8 million shares of Tesla. I will buy more whenever I have the cash. Now it's important to realize that not only does Leo Koguan have over $4.5 billion worth of Tesla shares even at these lowered prices. His financial position, although obviously larger than most retail investors, may be differently structured than others. Because he's running a large business, he may have cash flow continuously coming in, allowing him to buy shares, exactly as he says, when he has cash. And so he can afford to buy stock in Tesla at any price because if he makes a mistake and buys too high, well, more cash is on the way for next month and he can buy again at lower prices. Some retail investors may run out of cash or may not have such free cash flow, even on a smaller scale, to keep buying and buying. His tweet is actually in response to something he wrote a few days earlier, where he said, Markets is throwing knives at Tesla bulls. I caught 10,000 knives at $266.71 per share. I bought Tesla at 400, 350, 300, and now 266 and 71 cents per share. Be extra cautious because the kiss of death market signal, bloodbath and bond markets, export earnings will be down from strong dollar. First off, he says that he's bought Tesla at basically every range of prices that Tesla has gone through over the last year. And interestingly, it's not seen in the main tweet where Elon Musk replied, but he does warn to be cautious because of various reasons, including exports, which could be affected by a strong dollar, and this affects Tesla more directly. And I think that's something that not a lot of people are talking about with regards to Tesla's earnings. Though Tesla does have the ability to raise prices in other countries to make up for this deficit over time and still see strong demand on their products. It's also good to see Leo Koguan's confidence in Tesla's stock which may be something that the bulls need to hear after Tesla got trounced by the market. Although he says to be cautious, there could be more pain ahead. He's still putting his money into the company and he's investing for the long term. A strong US dollar, for instance, may only be a short term phenomenon and may not affect Tesla in five to 10 years. He also talks about catching knives, which is a metaphor for a falling stock. But by hanging onto the shares, He's in a sense reducing the supply of Tesla shares in the market, albeit at a small scale. But this increases the scarcity of Tesla shares alongside other retail investors that are buying shares for the long term. Going back to the main tweet, he says, Be extra cautious. Please catch the sharp knives with your cash, not margin borrowing, because more storms are coming with scary looking knives falling down from dark clouds. Tesla is having P.E. ratio compression that can be solved only by buyback and or by two times earnings increase, to which Elon Musk replied, noted. Now, it's a little unclear as to what Elon Musk is noting here, and I think purposely so. 
Koguan again says to be extra cautious, perhaps referring to the strong dollar and the other macro issues as per his other tweet. Though this is a rough market and Tesla stock can be pushed down lower than people expect for any reason. Koguan does warn against margin borrowing, citing more storms coming, hinting that the market can remain choppy and it's not over yet. He talks about Tesla's P.E. ratio compression, meaning that people are no longer willing to pay as much for the same earnings, and that could also be a result of rising interest rates which act as gravity on stocks. Though he says that this can only be solved by a buyback and or by a 2x earnings increase. Now I think there are other ways to solve this as well. For instance, if interest rates go back down, it could lead to multiple expansion with a recovery. Another thing that could give more value to Tesla, which goes hand in hand with the 2x earnings increase, is Tesla demonstrating an increased level of growth or an acceleration in their business. Being able to grow faster than the current expectations would cause analysts to have to readjust their models to the upside. Furthermore, if Tesla can show that it's been able to navigate the turmoil well, such as passing through price increases to counter strong dollar effects, etc., then people who sold may once again be more comfortable owning a safer stock. Now, Koguan does say that a buyback or two times earnings increase could also fix this. The first is a recommendation, and the second is hoping that Tesla doubles their earnings. Now, Tesla may actually deliver results that are about two times higher than last year's earnings. Last year, Tesla earned 62 cents per share, and currently the analysts are forecasting about a dollar per share. However, Tesla delivered significantly more vehicles, about 33,000 more than in the first quarter of the year when they reported $1.07 per share of earnings. It's very possible with more deliveries that they surpass that number among other tailwinds that I spoke about in some recent videos. The strong US dollar did really take off in September, and so it won't affect the full quarter given that many of Tesla's deliveries do occur in China. So Elon Musk may be noting a two times earning increase that's in the cards without actually saying that directly, which he wouldn't be allowed to. Even then, it may not change the trajectory of the stock since new developments have occurred after the end of the September quarter and investors are always looking towards the future and not the past. So if Tesla gives any hint about the coming quarter's production supply or demand, that forecast or just positive words from the company may have more of an effect on the stock than beating last quarter's estimates. A buyback is also interesting, but perhaps questionable, since 100% of Tesla's cash makes up less than 3% of the company's market cap. If they took a large chunk of their money, say $5 billion of cash, and used it to buy back stock, they would only be able to shrink Tesla's share base by about 0.7%. For reference, the stock fell over 7% on Friday in one day, wiping out over $45 billion of value. So a buyback wouldn't realistically help investors much, but it may signal to the market that Tesla thinks their stock is cheap, which could move the stock higher if the market cares, but it doesn't offer much real support. If they buy back shares at $205 per share, and then the stock dips to say $150, then they look like idiots for wasting all that cash. Digging in a little deeper, as of June 30th of this year, Tesla had around $18 billion of cash. Now, in my opinion, that's not a lot of money. It may seem like a lot of money, $18 billion, but when you're managing a $650 billion to a trillion dollar company from just months ago, everything becomes relative. The largest US companies have far more cash than Tesla relative to their size and market cap. Out of the top 13 companies in the US with the most cash on hand, they all have at least double the amount of cash that Tesla has, even if most of their market caps are actually smaller than Tesla's. The Tesla of a few weeks ago, which was a bit larger before this sell-off, might be more comparable to Amazon in terms of size, a company that has $86 billion of cash, about four to five times more than Tesla. Even Ford and General Motors are on this list, with $36 billion and $38 billion respectively, and people are talking about how Ford and GM can go bankrupt if they don't move fast enough into EVs, but they have quite the cash cushion to protect themselves, perhaps for many years. Interestingly, Ford and GM's market caps are each at about $47 billion, so these companies are basically just blocks of cash right now. About 75% of the market cap of these two companies are cash, versus Tesla being closer to just 2.8%.
If anything, GM should do a massive buyback and spend all of their money buying back stock. Or should they? It's also important to understand that all of these companies, especially in the automotive sector, have massive expenses. One way to think about a business is similar to an individual. If you lose your job, the income stops coming in, but most of the expenses continue. It's usually prudent, if possible, to create a buffer of cash so that even in bad times, maybe in really bad times, you can last through them in order to survive and perhaps come out even stronger on the other side. So having a cash pile is very important in case of a black swan event or prolonged downturn, even if right now you think the cash will never be used and is just sitting idle. Now Tesla plays in a very difficult and competitive landscape and huge sums of capital are needed for making cars. In the last quarter alone, Tesla made $16 billion in revenue, but it had to spend almost $13 billion in order to accomplish that. And that's just expenses in a three month period. We're sort of excluding the $3 billion that it also invested into the business in the first half of the year. But if for whatever reason this revenue stops coming in or gets hit dramatically, even if it's a short-term thing, having a cash cushion is the difference between keeping the business alive and not. And we've actually seen these life-or-death situations for the company multiple times in the last few years and even since Tesla's inception. Not being able to get the new Model 3 technology rolled out fast enough to start scaling deliveries. Or more recently, Tesla just built two massive and expensive factories in Berlin and Austin, and it's imperative that these ramp up quickly. What about the pandemic, which shut down the entire economy? Tesla wasn't even allowed to operate during this time. And they've also had a very recent shutdown in China at their most productive factory, taking out about a month and a half of deliveries, equivalent to around 100,000 cars. While Tesla is more diversified now with gigafactories in multiple geographical locations that can directly and indirectly support each other and the company as a whole, still anything can happen. If Tesla builds 100,000 cars and if for whatever reason isn't allowed to ship or deliver them, they've spent a ton of money and have no revenue or even just a smaller set of losses for a prolonged period of time, say a deep recession that may affect the company, enough cash should always be there to support the business through bad times, just in case these things stay negative for a bit longer than expected. I think that Tesla is still in its early innings and they want to get to 20 million cars per year, which requires still a lot of investment and therefore a lot of risk to go with it. Every dollar spent needs to have a positive return, otherwise it's a loss, and this company will always be experiencing growing pains because they're creating and expanding a new industry that doesn't exist. Every time they secure enough batteries for this year's vehicles or energy numbers, there's always next year which is even more ambitious. Therefore the expenses keep getting larger and larger, and thus their cash buffer may actually need to grow with this increased risk. Tesla should be able to have plenty of wiggle room and in a negative environment that narrows down. You can't easily lay off, say, 50% of your employees and hope they come back when times are good again. I think that Tesla is actually an extremely well-run company, especially from a financial perspective. Elon Musk made sure that the team was lean months ago. There were some job cuts very early in this downturn, which was very smart and prudent on Tesla's part. But during a downturn, cash becomes very important for survival. Tesla doesn't seem to have much excess cash here, they're not overflowing in cash, they have a decent amount, but below other companies given their size. While there is some pressure to do a buyback this year because the government will introduce a 1% tax on buybacks starting in 2023, it doesn't seem like spending say 30% of their cash to buy just 0.7% of their stock does much more for shareholders. That actually seems to increase risk quite significantly. The best thing to create value is to invest in the business, to make sure it comes out of the downturn much stronger than before. Keep in mind that when things get tough, Tesla's competitors will pull back on spending and on projects as well. And I think their competitors are in way worse shape given that they all sell ICE vehicles as their core businesses, which everyone is trying to move away from. So I think the cash cushion should be there to basically allow Tesla to not have to pull back on their EV development efforts and their other future projects and keep investing for the long term, which will truly create value for shareholders. If you think about Tesla's return on investment, they could spend $5 billion on stock, or maybe it doubles, or it could go down even further. 
But that amount of money could be used to build a gigafactory or two or some mega factories or something that produces products that people want. Usually you do a buyback when you run out of good investment prospects. But just to give an idea of the power of Tesla's investment opportunities, currently their entire $640 billion company, and it was a trillion a month ago, is basically being valued off of four gigafactories. So really $5 billion can turn into a few hundred billion of value by investing in their technology and business expansion. Now, if you think Tesla stock is cheap, then individual investors can buy and hold on to the shares. And this, in a sense, eats up the available shares, just as Leo Koguan stated that he was trying to do. Collectively, individual investors should actually have way more cash than Tesla. While it wouldn't be free, you likely can easily increase your Tesla holdings by 0.7% unless you own 20 million shares like Leo Koguan but that would effectively be a buyback without Tesla needing to step in and spend their own money, which may or may not be much needed in the near future, depending on how things play out. So do you think that Tesla should still do a stock buyback, or do you think that keeping cash on their balance sheet is more important for reducing risk? And if Tesla doubles last year's earnings and beats analyst estimates when it reports later this week, will that propel the stock higher and create an absolute bottom in the stock price? Be sure to check out my last video on the explanation of the Tesla Dojo supercomputer. Please hit the like button and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.